wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there we are. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us again for another episode of the Church Communications Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl Girardier, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Katie Allred. Today's sponsor is Touchpoint. Touchpoint is a church management system built by the church for the church. They are an online church management platform and mobile app designed to work together to keep your church connected at any time and any place. The newly relaunched Touchpoint mobile app enables church staff, lay leaders, and members to manage giving, check in for classes, small groups, update their contact information, stream sermon audio and video, register events, receive messages, complete ministry tasks, schedule marketing messages, and much, much more. And because the app integrates with your Touchpoint database, your members' contact information is correct and up to date. The mission of Touchpoint is to eliminate the need for numerous point solutions and to free you from the data silos. They want to see you make disciples, not data. Go to churchcommunications.com slash touchpoint to get a free ebook all about the field guide for data-driven ministry. Thanks again, Touchpoint, for sponsoring this episode. And also Skype. Skype, the people that are providing the opportunity for us to do this. They're not sponsoring us, but we got to mention them. Cool. Yay. Katie, how was vacay? It was um, good uh, for the most part, 95% good. So that was great. Uh, My friend got engaged, so uh, that was fun. We planned that out and really surprised her, so that that was a good time. Who's the children's minister at Brentwood Baptist? So that's that's fun, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of beaching, you know. Yes. And I turned off my work email, so I'm sure I've got a lot of surprises waiting in there for me. So you haven't turned it on yet? Uh, uh-uh, uh, I ain't gonna look at it till tomorrow. You can forget it. Okay, good, good. That that's probably the best thing for you to do. <laughs> so it'll be it'll be it'll be great. It's gonna um, be like Christmas morning. Yeah, full of anxiety and depression. I'm just <laughs> what are your normal Christmas mornings like? Um, that have you? <laughs> we already talked about my hatred for Christmas. Anyway, um, so <laughs> this is the church podcast. <laughs> the title of the episode um, is "Katie Hates Christmas." All right. Yeah, right, right, right. I love Easter though. Like that's that's a good thing. Uh, Jesus coming back from the dead. I'm all about that life, but so. not about him being bored. All right. Well, you know that part. Uh, Santa. You know, I just feel like it's overrated. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so Facebook. Yes. Facebook did an FA conference the other day. What what would we be without this fun banter? I know. Um, Facebook. You know, so they did their FA conference the yeah. other day. And my friend from Facebook who works there, she posted about uh, YouVersion getting, uh, talking about being able to post to groups now, maybe in the future. Ooh. Like automatically post to groups. Really? So, from inside the would, app? Yeah. Uh, no, not just from inside the app. Like, I think like automatic recurring post. Interesting. Yeah. So those of you who don't know, F, uh, FYI, if you will, F8 is the, Think of it like Apple's keynote, if you will. Like they have their uh, their worldwide developers conference. Actually, it's going to be in a couple of weeks where they announce all their big stuff for the year. This is kind of Facebook's version of that. Google has Google I/O. Facebook has F8, which is designed for developers. developers really, but to be honest with you, it's actually a really good sense of a roadmap of where Facebook is headed over the next twelve months, even eighteen months, even further down the road. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I think it's you know if you use Facebook. For your church, it's probably a pretty good idea just to sit down and watch. It's only 90 minutes long, but it's kind of worth it. It's kind of some interesting stuff. So that's what we want to recap today. No. Yeah. So you, so Nona, so you're, you're a friend of yours. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't Nona. It was actually Christy. Uh, yeah. Your Shout other, out to Christy. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. So like it, it um, if you haven't watched it, it first starts off with Mark kind of doing his speech and apologizing for, you know, various things that have happened and we won't go into those things. Um, Which I think yes. Things. And then he just went straight into like, let's get it on. Let's talk about relationships. Let's talk about a lot of stuff. And they dived into like a pretty diverse set of things. Um, one of which Katie, and I actually have a theory behind this and why it's actually worth talking. There are, I don't know if it was a separate app, but they're introducing dating features on Facebook. Right. Yeah, um, I think it's probably going to be inside the app, honestly. Okay. Um, although, 
Maybe not. I mean, they didn't separate Marketplace, which I, for all things, okay, they separated this local thing. Like, they made yeah. this local right. app, which really I haven't found any use for nope. besides it being really annoying because yep. sometimes I have to go over there to find my event stuff, and I just wish it was in Facebook. Yep. Um, although I guess some people felt that way about Messenger for a long time. But um, I don't know if they're going to make it. I guess they would make a separate app for dating. I don't know. But here's, here's a couple of things that I thought. I find was interesting. First off, one, it was interesting that Match.com stock immediately tumbled the moment this thing was announced. But here's the thing. I think what they're saying is this is not about dating. This is about them trying to get better at you matching with another person that you would have a good relationship with. Sure. Dating I or think not. via mutual friends, via, possibly. Via mutual friends, but I would also assume via mutual interests. Like sure, a, yeah. So – you know, the logical step would be is to say like, because right now your friend suggested list is based off of mutual friends, right? I mean, you're, sure, yeah. But what if it, your friend list was based off of mutual interests? In other words, like you really are into these things and you spend a lot of time on these things. And guess what? These people spend the same amount of time on these things. You guys might be good friends, which sure. means they're really trying to move the platform from a one to many type of publishing to a one to one. Does that make sense? Like in other words, um, to, yeah, I mean, to, and I, it, yeah, I think it could be even more for uh, not just dating, but for friendship maybe as well. Which means that I think what they're going to be doing, if you are like a church and you publish content that's a one to many, i.e., your pages, I think those days are. We already know they're kind of numbered. I think they're like. I think it's faster than we think. Like, no. um, I'm working on a post for churchcommunications.com right now where. Basically, I'm making the argument that pages, your page is going to basically become like a page on Yelp. Like, <laughs> it's there. People can write reviews. You can answer a couple of questions. But I don't know if those days of us publishing content on pages and getting people to see it is I, – I think those are coming to an end. I think I don't think they want people to make connections with brands the way that we that they would say like two or three years ago. Yeah, I think it's, it's changing for sure. Um yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Hear, I hear you. Um, all right. A couple of things. Uh, let's run through some stuff. Video calls are coming to Instagram. You're going to be able to do it looks like multi person video chat basically coming to Instagram. Yep. Multi person video chat. I think we talked about that a couple of episodes. Yeah. I thought ago, we did actually. too. Because I thought it was kind of like they're, they were kind of. Look at us being ahead of the times. Yay. They were talking about a uh, house party and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, they're also – Oculus is a big thing. The, yes. The, the, okay. The, Convince me, though, I should care about it, though, Katie, because I was on this thing yesterday <laughs> with CV Outreach and – What's that? You were hanging out with CV? Yeah, I was – Yesterday? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, I, was, I, was doing the, I was doing their stream and, like, they had cool. a bunch of wonderful people and I'm not anyway disparaging who they are or what they yeah. do, et cetera. But they were all like really into like this whole VR thing, and I and maybe I'm just kind of look. I look at I look at our audience, and I'm thinking I can't imagine the person our people. I don't think like, it's about our audience. I okay. think it's about the people who are not in a church. So there are thousands of people on in virtual reality who have never entered a church, and there's never been like a Christian space okay. at all okay. in the VR community. So it's more about reaching those people who have never than more more so than reaching the people who are in our body, like already in our body. So would you classify and, and so you're bringing it's basically evangelism. Yes, but so are you classifying VR people as a community and not as a tool? And what I mean by that is is like in other words, you and I wouldn't classify smartphone users as a community because practically everybody's got a smartphone. But sure. you're classifying VR users as a community. Is that because you see them? as a like a, a a niche group if that makes sense um they are a niche group but i would say that people who do vr are in community in their vr communities kind of like people who are, have facebook groups like we're in a facebook group right? right but there are other people who are in other facebook groups who feel like they're in community as well not besides just ours okay. Um, so people who are in, you could say that people who are in Facebook groups feel like they are in community, just like people who do VR feel like they are in community. Okay. So, um, and it's a little more realistic. I, you know, my entire, um, I did an entire course actually in virtual reality in my master's program. And it was done by a professor who was doing research <clears throat> for Parkinson's patients and how, um, 
people with special needs feel like in VR that they have complete control of their bodies where they may not have that. Got and it. so really it's reaching an entire community, right, of Correct. people who um, <clears throat> may otherwise not feel comfortable coming and meeting people at a church traditionally. But uh, I think DJ Soto, who's doing the yeah. virtual reality church that Wired wrote about, is doing really amazing work, um, just giving up his entire life to to find these people who are far from God. He says, you know, he's had more honest conversations than he's ever had doing VR church than he's ever had in like a real church because he was a church of like a me- like a mega church for. Mm. I mean, he was a pastor for a mega church for a long time, and he was like, people will just straight up come up to me and tell them tell me that they're dealing with suicidal thoughts where. It may take me three or four conversations with that person yep. in real life to have those deep and meaningful conversations. So, um, <clears throat> because people, I don't know, they're not right. Their body language is different, and they're they're I don't know, maybe more in control of the situation because yep. um, they can just leave, right? But like when you're in person, you feel I don't know, it just feels different. So yep. I, I can see. It's not about us, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not about our community, because, yeah, I don't think people at Brentwood Baptist Church are going to love VR or anything. Yeah. Um, it's definitely about finding those people who are already in it, or people who are going to be in it soon. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, because I think I it's just the next step for most gamers, or most um, people who don't have community anyway, who are lonely. I think it's like an easy, easy way to find access to people without um, having to try i don't know uh, it, it's just like maybe an easier outlet yeah no and i, I don't i don't in any way shape or form disagree with that in, in terms i think where i take issue with some of it is is what it's presented like if you're not into this you're behind in some way shape or form and i think that's a little bit sometimes the attitude that can be presented with some of these technologies and so vr sometimes can fit in that category um all right next one is facebook ads facebook messenger is going to now be able to do spanish translations uh, it looks like in kind of almost like you can basically hit a button in real and, time in real time and it'll translate the English. Well, they've been doing that for a while though, like with regular Facebook. Yeah. So well, it looks like now they can do it inside of messenger. So I'm assuming like if you're doing messenger to like, you know, which, which is be great for us for one of our campuses, because one of our campuses is as a larger Hispanic population that their people can, you know, quote unquote, yeah. handle the inbox, if you will, of their, you know, yeah. Well, and apparently they're also redesigning Messenger as well. Yes. Yeah. So it looks like they've cleaned it up quite a bit. Um, That's exciting. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 uh, I mean, he's, I can't remember exactly Mark's exact phrasing, but it was like, he goes, we've cleaned it up. If you look at it, I mean, it looks nice. So uh, the iOS version that, you know, they showed makes it look more like an, almost like a native iOS app. You know, in other words, yeah. it looks like, it almost looks like, slightly to a certain degree that it's something Apple would have done in some ways Mm -hmm. on some of the aesthetics of it. But I thought that was kind of nice. They kind of pulled that together. Um, I think messenger is here to stay. I uh, have a hard time believing that it's a product that would go by the wayside. I don't know if they would integrate it with WhatsApp or whatever, but messenger is really handy when you're trying to find a bunch of friends and you don't have their phone number. Because you don't have to, you don't have to remember a number. You don't have to ask for a number. You can just be, like, oh, I'm just gonna look up this person's name and send them a message. Yeah, I know. I completely agree. I think, um, I don't think it goes away because I think for them, they will see it as a long, ter- long term tool against Snapchat. Um, I know, right, we, right. I know, we think of Instagram as the kind of their their answer to Snapchat. I actually think Messenger is in some ways because Messenger really is built on that whole one to one communication and the and you're right, pulling together, pulling together. We we do it all the time of like, hey. Can you contact someone? So yeah, I'll pull them into a group message real fast, and we'll kind of hash some of those details. You know, whatever details we're working out. So, yeah. um, so yeah. Instagram stories yeah. now have GoPro and Spotify. Yes, so interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm waiting for me to get the uh, the share in your story from a post. Yes. Have you seen that? Yeah. I, I, I don't have that like feature yet. Cause you know, they roll it out to so many people at a time. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to get the feature to do that. But apparently you can now like share and trim your um, Instagram stories uh, from GoPro, which is neat. Yeah. And share. And then uh, you can share music from Spotify, which is handy because I've done that before, but I had to just like sit there and record it. 
which was super annoying. So I'm like happy that there you can easily share um, music from Spotify well, now. I think it's smart for them. I, I actually think it's more smart for GoPro than anybody else because GoPro is, I think, kind of struggled a little bit with the fact that the iPhone is kind of cameras gotten so good people have used it versus a GoPro. So I mean, I think that is kind of great. You know, the other thing when you said stories, it reminded me one of the other stats they shared during the presentation was Mark said that. Facebook stories, you know, in other words, not Instagram stories, Facebook stories was on a trajectory to outpace Facebook newsfeed. Huh. That its growth pattern, when they look at it, was eventually they project more people would actually use their actual stories than they actually will the newsfeed. Um, which I didn't, I at first was like, really? And then I thought, you know what? I actually – I've seen more of that in my news feed. And in other words, when I've, I've played with it, I've seen more stories popping up. More people are utilizing that. Mm -hmm. But – so, Katie, if that is the case, is that a radical uh, – in other words, if I'm opening up now – now imagine I'm opening up the Facebook app and what the first thing I do is I start hitting the stories. I just start strolling through the stories and I almost ignore the news feed. How does that affect a church? I mean you just have to make more stories. Yeah, you, so. you basically – but like – but I don't think it affects. Uh, the thing is, hmm, you can share. The thing about Facebook too is you can share your post to your story right. and like post, do both at the same time. Yeah. So you can't do it necessarily with a page quite yet, but I can see that coming. I just, um, I mean, obviously your page isn't going to work anyway. Yeah. And if people aren't in the news feed, the groups can be in, in stories now. Right. So I think that would probably be a bigger thing eventually. So I have to look more into that. Uh, yeah, something else actually is not on the list that you and I are, are looking at as well. They're kind of reminding me was uh, they he talked through the new Facebook watch parties, which, you know, you yeah. can watch a video together. But he also said they're introducing a live narrator feature, which basically hmm. would allow – whoever the host is of the watch party to be kind of like a circle icon to the upper right, if you will. And they can do a live narration of what's going on during the live feed. So they oh. can almost talk over it. Um, That's neat. Which I actually, I think is actually really cool if you're doing online church that way. If there's a way that you, so what you could do is, is like, if you're doing online church and let's say you're having a moment in the room that's really designed for the room, you know, it's like. Sure, yeah, you can turn it down. And turn it down. Then all of a sudden that host comes on and says, hey, I want to encourage you to do X, Y, and Z, yada, 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 have a clear call to action, right. whatever, that, whatever that is. So uh, I thought that was, again, I, I, they didn't get, you know, Katie, you did not get your desktop publishing video solution. I do think that's coming. I know he didn't mention it, but it, it I, I don't think it's far off. Yes. So, um, but I thought those kind of things were kind of cool. I thought they're kind of welcome. I thought, okay, this is kind of sweet. Um, yeah. let's do some other stuff. Well, that that came... We have to make a group, right? Because you can't do a watch party in a, in a page. That's true. That is very so. true. So yeah, got to keep your eye on that. Uh, let's do some other stuff they've got here. Um, so it looks like they're also introducing some more AR stuff. So the fact you will be able to do some augmented reality stuff and some more 3D stuff inside their different uh, offerings, i.e. Uh, Instagram's now going to let you do some custom uh, AR filters. Um, and I think they were saying in the Facebook camera they were looking at doing some of that stuff as well. Some of the stuff that's a little bit, I think, kind of tricked out is what uh, I think Chad Huggins said the other day. It's some pretty interesting stuff. Um, uh, let's see here, Katie. Is there anything else on that list that kind of strikes you? I think that's I think that's everything. I think we covered all the stuff. Yeah. So it was definitely interesting. Um, I, you know, I think the uh, oh, the I think a couple of things was is they definitely are they definitely highlighted groups and definitely showed more ways they're going to try embed groups where you can have it make it easier to join groups or call to actions to join groups and, and place the buttons and so forth in various places. Um, I thought the biggest sign was this, Katie, was not a single mention of pages whatsoever. Nothing. Nada. Yeah. Uh, yep. Groups and Messenger got all the love and Instagram, but no yeah. pages mentioning. So, I, you know, I feel like, uh, I feel like that's your sign. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for a sign, uh, I think they just gave it to you that it's, 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 it's not there. Yeah. Tomorrow I will need to schedule a million things to go out on a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So here's the question though is, okay, so let me, let's, 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 let's take it down to a practical level for churches. Okay. So. We've talked about some stuff that's a little bit, maybe for some people, a little bit out of reach. But I love it. yeah, okay. So if I'm hearing all of this, what's a better use of my time? 
should like like you i've got like you know x amount of things that's what i want to put on my facebook page should, is it i'm better off like cutting those in half and taking half of that time because you know a lot of our people who were listening to this are people who not only just are just scheduling this stuff they're actually creating the post and creating the graphics they're doing all the you know they're doing the right. whole thing from top to tail right. are they better off maybe cutting that workload in half and saying i'm going to spend half my time as much as i used to spend on this and instead invest it in something else like groups instagram stories you know the words are we at a point where is it good advice to tell people you should still do it but don't nearly do it on the level that you used to do it say six to eight months ago sure yeah um, at this point, I mean, we're not, uh, I mean, we're still doing Facebook live cause I think the, the, our reach is still there, yeah. um, to do that. Uh, but we're not spending a lot of time putting together like Facebook posts specifically for Facebook. We're doing a lot more Instagram heavy yeah. stuff that just feeds over to Facebook, which I think is fine. Um, it's still working for us. It still gets really good reach. It's gotten a lot more shares and engagement than it's ever gotten before, which yeah. is odd. It, the, it seems like the views are lower. Uh, I think that's maybe because Facebook's being more honest yes. uh, than ever about uh, who, how many people are seeing it. Mm-hmm. But we've gotten, uh, we've done less, but we've gotten more. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I, it's funny. When I go back and I look at our stuff, it's less views and definitely more um, – our video content is getting more – our video specifically when you cut together choir clips. That kind of stuff is always, has always done well, but now I'm seeing more interaction with that content than I have in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's interesting. So, you know, that, again, that, but they – I think that was part of their whole deal. What did, I mean, they said they wanted to get content that people interacted with more um, versus right. just – passive content that people were just kind of consuming and moving on to the machine. Exactly. Feed the machine. Uh, Katie, is there anything you want to lift up in this episode? Mm, The beach. (laughs) You should go. It's great. Get tan. Eat some seafood. (laughs) Uh, You get bitten by a bug. Um, Yeah. Well, Hey, you know what? That's between me and the Lord. So, (laughs) All right. There you go. Uh, Fantastic. Well, there you go, folks. If you're listening to this episode, um, we want to thank you for that. Please go to iTunes and leave us a wonderful comment rating, if you will. Hit the subscribe button in your local podcast app that you got on your phone. If you're watching on Facebook, hit the like or share button. And if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. We'd love that as well. And until next week, you guys take care. Have a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon.